Hey there friends, Martin here and welcome to the second part of this series. This time I'll be showing you how to use skin gen tool in character creator to very quickly add texture layers to your characters and also how to add some hair and beards onto them before exporting them to iClone. So let's get to it. Before we start the second part though, let's not forget, for a few days still, Reillusion offers Black Friday discounts where you can for example get 50% off when you purchase two or more products. And if you miss this, you can always use my 15% off discount code. The info is in the description. All right, here we are back in Character Creator and right off the bat, let's go back to the Smart Gallery and let's put something new onto our character. And before we go to the hair or clothing or accessories, let's actually have a look at the Skin Gen Editor. It is a newer addition to Character Creator 3 and actually that's the one addition that really brought me to this software because I wanted to texture characters as fast as possible with automatic tools and that's exactly what Skin Gen does. You find it here and kind of weirdly you have to activate this editor by checking this field here. What's going on is that all the textures on this character, they're all layered. But throughout the majority of your workflow, they are flattened out, basically to improve speed. And to unbake it and be able to play with the layers of textures separately, you need to activate this skin editor in here. It takes a while, so let me speed it up. So here we are in the skin gen menu, it's right here and you can see different layers being layered on top of our character's base. Every time you load up this menu, down here at the very bottom, you have the skin base, which is basically the pure skin texture that we get for our characters. And above it, there's all these layers. Let me actually go to this menu and for a while hide all of them. One thing, it asks you whether you want to hide all the layers for the current material or for all the materials. So what does it mean? There are five materials for one character, the head, bottom, arm, leg and nails. And by the way, these five materials will then correspond to materials in Blender when we export the character there. So yeah, I want to hide the layers just for the current material. And you can see now the character gets much more clean without any additional detail. And correspondingly, these little eye icons here disappear. So you can gradually unhide all the little details on his face. You have some veins, you have some hemoglobin, you have capillary detail and little acne, beard and scalp. Of course, this is not 3D, this is just a base texture for when you later want to add some hair. One thing, there is this texture option and you can update the size of it. So if you know you will be needing characters for really large close-ups, you just switch to a different resolution and then hit update and it will change the resolution for all the other materials on this character. The 4K resolution, of course, gives you enormous amount of detail, so watch out for that, it will slow down your scenes. So I usually use 2K, even for close-ups, and it was fine so far for my shots. Now let's have a look at what happens when you click on these different layers and you start playing with them. There is all sorts of different maps shown here. Uh, you basically can see different passes as if you were in Blender Shader Editor, which textures the material is using. So we have base color, normal and ambient occlusion, roughness uh, and some color IDs differentiating the mouth and eyelashes and various regions of this map. All right, so let's hide this. And for example, I want this guy to have a little darker skin. Uh, in here, in the color ID black hat, you can bring down the brightness a little bit. Uh, for example, like this and the southern types usually have a tiny bit of olive hue to their skin. Uh, so I found out that when I set it to like 0.02, it's maybe too much, so 0.01, it gives this uh, little tint of greenish color in the skin. So that's how I can adjust the tint of the skin for my characters. And yeah, it's just for the head now, but if you hit update, it automatically changes for the whole body. And then you can of course click on any of these layers here and play with their various details. So for example, we have this opacity, which I use quite a lot. Uh, if you want the wane to be really opaque, you can set it to 100 or less. Now let me actually pack all this because this material comprises of various parts. And so we have this body vascular detail and 
It's made of forehead part, side part, front neck, back neck, and part five. I don't even know what part five is. Well, anyways, uh, first think of a region you want to adjust, like this vein here. And it should be this one, because it's on the front of the neck. And when we open it up, you can see that we have various sliders here. So let's increase the normal strength. See? It's not the opacity of the effect, but it's actually the strength of the normal. So if you really want to fine-tune these little things, you can do it in here, uh, in these menus over here. You can also increase the color opacity of the vein and change the roughness, all sorts of sliders like this. So yeah, I recommend packing these menus first to better orient yourself in them. But after that, all the sliders are pretty self-explanatory. That is, if you understand CG texturing at least a bit. One more note, every time in the thumbnail of these layers, you can see something that is white. There's no skin color in the thumbnail. And that means we'll be adding normal detail, not colors. Anytime there is something with color, you will be adding normals as well as color information over your base skin. Of course, we didn't even talk about how to add your own layers. So, yep, it's in the Smart Gallery, Skin Menu, and again, I have these packs here, but let's open up the one that should be there by default. And you have to navigate to the Skin Menu here. And here you have all sorts of subfolders. First one is skin base, but we will not be overwriting the base that is built into this Caleb preset. Next, we have little normal details. And you see, as I mentioned, these normal effects, they're all white. So that indicates that there will be no base color added, just normal maps. So for example, let me add a little secondary detail on his face here. Double click it and you can choose whether to add to these layers here or replace it. It's usually okay to add, but watch out, the basic version of SkinGen only supports 15 layers. Uh, so yeah, do not go over it. Uh, the premium version of the add-on of course removes this cap. Let's add and see, it added a secondary detail. You can increase the opacity or decrease it, but we don't need it, so let's right click delete it. But yeah, that's how easy it is to add more layers to anything you could possibly like. For example, these wrinkles might be nice. And yeah, we've added more wrinkles. Cool. He looks more grizzled now. Then we have skin details. And as you can see, the thumbnails are a bit colored. So that means we'll be adding more skin detail with base color texture. Let's choose something for the other parts of the body. Uh, so, yeah, let's add, for example, this dull skin for the legs. We can switch to the leg material in here. Double click it uh, and let's see what it does. Yeah, it adds a little bit more coloration to the legs, like he has some sort of rash or something. So why not? Let's leave it. And that's how you add more layers to your character's textures. And again, these menus here have enormous amount of little details for the skin that you can add, uh, like tattoos and scars. These scars are pretty cool uh, for something like fight scenes. And if you double click these, they will add a layer not just to the head, but to all the other regions on your character's body. So yeah, it added it to the hands, to the body and to the face. But this is probably too much, so... <laughs> In fact, control Z and undo a few steps. We can also choose to add a bit of dirt. Uh, let's go to head. That added these two layers. And we have some liquid dirt. So I think let's bring down the opacity quite a bit. And the dry dirt, something like this for the opacity. And together it adds more texture. And I think more believability to the face. He is not that perfectly squishy clean. Then we of course have makeup, which is a different folder for the skin gen. Uh, these layers can get added on top of the skin layers. And of course this is much more suited for women characters rather than men. Uh, however, there is also different types of details, not just mascara and eyeshadows. Uh, you can see here we also have these eyebrows and 
miscellaneous. Other than that, the functionality is the same. So you can play around with all these options here. Maybe the eyebrow is a bit too intense. So let me bring it down to about this. And I think it's enough customizing for a character and the outfits. Let's not go into that. That is if we had some outfits that needed adjusting, but we don't really. So we have added some nice layers of detail onto our character and now it's time to bake everything and continue adding some hair and beard. Uh, baking of all the textures happens with this. You just uncheck it and this will basically jump back to the regular mode where you can adjust your character. Everything gets added back. So we have the eyebrow here and the boxers and only all the textures have been added. Uh, we have the rash on the foot, we have the slightly more olive skin and we have some additional detail on the face. Uh, let me actually, since I'm making a character for my short film in ancient Greece, uh, let me actually raise this ridge here because Greek statues are famous for having this nose ridge, almost filling this area over here. Yeah, so that's a more typical Greek nose, I'd say. All right, so that was the skin folder and the makeup folder. Now we have some hair folder here. You will probably not have all these packages here that I have. I purchased some extra stuff for Character Creator. And if you want to see how I work with it, you can watch my specialized tutorial on this topic. It should pop up in the top right corner of the window now. By default, there should be this folder. Uh, there's some limited selection here, so we can layer some stuff onto our character. Of course, this short blowback hair is probably ideal for our warrior character. So let's add it in. And yeah, it looks kind of cool. So let's leave it. And also in this folder, hair element and beard, we have various options. So uh, let's add this circle thick and uh, chin sparse. You can do the mustache and the sideburns and the soul patch. Well, even the stubble, <laughs> basically everything except the Viking braid. Now to change the look of these elements, we can go to the stage material. And from here, we can choose to make it a little bit more grayish by just dragging this material onto the hair. Okay, this looks kind of closer towards this beard here. And another way to adjust the textures of this hair is to go to this menu. And here's the short blowback hair. And if we click it, we can change different parameters here. So as usual in these settings, first you have all the textures that are being used listed, and then you have shader settings. In here you can adjust various color parameters, so we can change the strand color and highlight color. So each strand has a root and end color, and if I raise the lightness of this end color, yeah, we're quite a bit closer to the look of the mustache hair. Of course, I can make it less specular in this parameters menu. So specular strength, let's bring it down. And for some of the highlight color, let's bring the saturation down too. And that's how easy you can change the look of the hair on your character. So yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with this. Of course, there is a lot more that you can do in this section. We have different eyebrows, for example. So if you want, you can replace the eyebrow that we already have on the Caleb character. And the awesome thing is you can always just take the gizmo and keep adjusting the character even with the hair on. It gets a little bit slower, but it still works. So that's really neat. And I love how responsive this is. This chin part of the beard is actually bugging me because it has different color than the rest of it. So let's use this material root gray on it. Just drag it onto the part of the beard. Most of the remaining menus here, I don't use that much. Uh, that's mostly for when you want to render directly out of Character Creator. I usually add my clothing inside of Blender. So yeah, uh, I recommend having something like these boxes here. That way basically you don't see the characters crotch when they do some action stuff later in the animation. You can also go to this animation folder, CC3 motion and expression package and add a basic pose and expression to your character, all done just by double clicking. But for this workflow, it is not necessary now. I usually pose my characters in iClone or later in Blender. Uh, usually at this stage, this is all I do for my character in Character Creator. And then you can just go to export and click 
send character to iClone. Of course, if you want it just like this without any animation, you can export it with FBX, but I usually like to add some animation in iClone. Also, you can click here, uh, send character to iClone. And it will take a while, but it will automatically get our model into iClone. And we'll have a look at how that works in the very next part of this series. So see you there, and until next time, Martin out. Thank you.